Last time we talked about uh, Clormas thermal paste, it was Cryfuse 7, and today, as I promised in that video, we have Cryfuse 5. But also, I got a comment on the Cryfuse 7 if I'm going to cover Cryfuse, just Cryfuse. So, here it is, right here. So, we have a variety of colors when we're talking about thermal paste, and this is quite strange to be honest. But I really wanted to give you more information about this, so I tested each individually. So, yeah, I went a bit too far with this benchmark. And we have cyan, blue, magenta, black, purple. I think one more is gray. And then we have the Cryfuse, which is also in gray. Now, as you notice in Cryfuse 7, if you watch that video, the same thing comes here in this, well, basically in the specifications. We have only a couple of information regarding the thermal paste. So, what I can say is that Viscosity at 22 degrees is 100, specific gra gravity at 25 degrees is 3.0, weight is 3 grams on all these smaller ones and on the bigger one we're having 20 grams, this is the purple one actually. And uh, then we have, uh, well basically that's it, what you get inside the box is a thermal paste scraper or the spatula and we have thermal grease remover or just simply grease remover. So. It, I went down and did the same benchmark, the same bench table as I did with all thermal paste uh, comparisons. So we're having MSI MPG B650 Carbon Wi-Fi paired up with MD Ryzen 9 X3D. And it cooled down with uh, Inwin MR36, I think that's the, the name of the AAO. I mean, it's the same configuration. And of course, Kingston uh, Fury Renegade 2x6 DDR5 RGB, 2x16 uh, at 6400 megahertz. And uh, basically, literally the same benchmarks because I want to give you an exact comparison. So, IDA64 Extreme Edition ran for 30 minutes. And uh, what was the other one? And uh, Cinebench R23, 10 minutes system stability test or the system throttle or whatever it's called. So, I wanted to give you the difference between the colors because. I know there isn't supposed to be, but there are some minor, not differences, but minor oscillations and nothing drastical. So what happened here with different colors, and I'm talking about these five, is that it was so close that I took, well, not a, basically, it is some sort of an average out of these five because it just oscillates the same way. So in one benchmarks, it's going uh, one color is going upwards with uh, scores and uh, clock speeds and thermals. Then we have on the one opposite. But when you check out and when you look at those benchmarks running at the current state, they have the same oscillations during the time. It's not the same at the same time, but eventually it kind of unifies. It goes into the same oscillations at some period of time. So, and then we have the Cryofuse, which was different than the Cryofuse 5. So, let's go into benchmarks because um, uh, basically there's no technical specifications and we know the colors already. So, yeah, that's it. So, I started with uh, the purple one, the big one, the 20 grams, and continue with black, uh, yellow, or cyan, blue, and of course magenta. Uh, finally, the Cryofuse uh, 2 grams gray, but I'll get to that point. So in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition, we got 90 degrees on the CPU with 4750 megahertz. And this is in AIDA 64 completely the same with all five of these. And it doesn't change whatsoever. There is no difference. This is the average. And then we go with Cryofuse, the 2 grams gray one. We get 89, but 4775, which is 25 uh, megahertz higher. And when we take a look where it stands, it goes right above Arctic MX4, but between Deepcool DM9. And for the Cryofuse, it goes above Cryofuse 7, but below Arctic MX6. So it's just a small margin. The only thing I wish I could do, and if I had that possibility, to run it for a longer period of time and to see how it degrades and what happens with it and similar stuff or a process that I could fasten up the longer period of time of usage but unfortunately i don't have that so let's go further and check out what we got in cinebench r23 the purple one goes with 83 degrees with 4975 megahertz cinebench score is 26790 beginning of 21 passes the passes for each and every one of those colored ones is at the beginning of 21 the craft used two grams gray one 
is 20 solid. So yeah, in that sense, it's below the Crafuse 5. And then we go with Cinnabon score. So I would say an average, and you'll see it in the graphs exactly. I'm the I'm just uh, giving you some ideas. So the purple 26,790, the black one 26,615, yellow 26,698, blue one 26,701, and uh, magenta 26,687. So I would say that somewhat an average is 26,700 around that. And with that, it's placed right above deep cool dm9 but below arctic mx6 and that's quite solid i do have to admit and then we go with the uh, cryofuse 2 grams gray one we get 84 on the cpu 4975 clock speed and cinebench score is 26418 this goes below noctua nth1 and above arctic mx4 so in those terms, what we can notice in Cinebench is the actual difference. And you can see the difference in scores. You can see the difference, minor difference in thermals, but definitely it goes solid in some top ranking when we're talking about Cryofuse 5. Of course, Cryofuse 7 is much more better. Uh, the, the, the density of Cryofuse 5 is thinner than Cryofuse 7. So when you actually place uh, Cryofuse 7 on the CPU, you'll notice that the density is much thicker. And this is the difference what I noticed from Cryofuse 5 to Cryofuse 7. The Cryofuse, the original one, is more thicker in density than the Cryofuse 5 as well. So I think the Cryofuse, the original one, is quite similar when we're talking about the construction I don't know the ex actual minerals inside and material and everything, how it's constructed, but I'm talking about the actual density of it. So yeah, you can take that uh, into consideration as well, because the density is also something quite important when we're talking about long hours of work, uh, constant uh, load on the processor, heat and heat dissipation and everything all together. So yeah, I, I, these are quite cool, but I'm quite shocked with different colors and maybe it's just something that might be i don't know attractive to someone and will it be okay for some but it's somewhere there when we're talking about the craft 7 pricing you notice that what i mentioned in that past video so the craft 5 is definitely cheaper and it kind of goes into that segment when we're talking about performance to price so that's okay in other words what i can say is if you really want to go full rgb and just go even with thermal paste which is kind of strange to be honest but if you want to just pick a color you can now and you have six options or seven i can't uh, remember precisely but in general you can choose a different color for thermal paste now and it goes into that segment i think i think they just inserted the color inside and they didn't play too much when we're talking about minerals or materials or whatever it's placed inside the uh, thermal paste so it doesn't obstruct the actual performance comparing each and every one of those uh, together so yeah that's it that's all for today guys i think it's a bit shorter video but it took long to test because we actually had because i actually had to run six different ones throughout 40 minutes of each and that kind of sums it up so hope you enjoyed the video and hope it gave you some insights regarding their thermal paste as well and i think from now on this will be the last one on this bench table for the future i'll be most likely jumping on the new uh, generation definitely amd for intel i'll see if if it's viable and if i could actually go in that uh, direction but it, regardless of that I'll give it a space just for one more if something pops up in the meantime, but everything else above that will be on hold until I collect all the suggested, of course, the suggested thermal paste that you guys wrote in other thermal paste comparison videos and just to give you more comprehensive and more detailed and everything and which will take loads of time as you noticed here. So yeah, that's it. If this gave you some insights, as I said, don't forget to subscribe if you already didn't. Don't forget to like the video and click the notification bell for future content uh, coming uh, quite shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.